classic cabaret floor work. It's one of my favorite parts of the dance. It can be learned easily when approached with attention and respect. In the multi-part belly dance, floor work is literally time spent kneeling or reclining on the floor in the talk scene or slow segment of the dance. It can be dramatic and powerful, drawing on earthy energy and displaying athletic strength. Including it in your dance in appropriate settings, such as an elevated stage or a visible floor area, can add dynamic range and great variety to your performance vocabulary. My philosophy is that one can pick and choose the movements that work best for you and create a safe, impressive dance statement. Historically, in the U.S., we saw it performed primarily by Turkish-style dancers in the 60s and 70s, and somewhat less often in recent times with the trend toward Egyptian styling. One possible reason for the change is that when long Egyptian costume fringe came into fashion, the dancer would prefer not to roll around on the floor and break the glass beads. From other sources, one hears that anything hinting back to the less sophisticated country style, including coin costumes and floor work, would be considered low class and not be performed by nice dancers. One other theory about floor work relates it to the oldest legends of the dance. In the birth ritual connection to belly dance, women friends would kneel around the woman in labor and with sympathetic magic help her belly roll her baby into the world. Belly rolls and other muscle work are used extensively in the floor work section. We don't have substantial authentication for belly dance history. But listening to many theories and reading can at least add to the ideas we form on the subject. Please take my information as just one more summary of other stories and form your own opinions. Happily, we have the freedom to compose our dance as we choose. And with so many choices, you do have a responsibility to understand what you are choosing. I hope this presentation will help you choose what you like best. In order of presentation, this program will cover, first, warm-ups that will help prepare your body for floor work. Then, I will break down both easy and more difficult movements in each teaching segment. This section will be in the order one might perform the actual dance. The sequence will be descents, seated movements, back layout, side layout, crawls and traveling, veil use on the floor, and ascents. In conclusion, I will present a complete costume performance featuring floor work. Here is some important information about safety and protection. The essential preparation for doing floor work is strengthening the thighs. Overall, they are the most used body part in this section of the dance. Strength and flexibility are the keys to avoiding injury. Do practice some form of leg workouts every day if you intend to perform floor work. Your body will appreciate it. One exercise I do daily is 50 shallow knee bends in the morning. It gets the blood flowing and the joints flexing. Another part of the body that is highly stressed by floor work is the knees. While practicing, remember to protect your knees with pads, rugs, towels, or even leg warmers. You should be aware that proper warm-up and protection will make your joints last longer. The key to practice is repetition. This means that you will repeat movements many more times than they would actually be performed. Lots of practice and repetition will increase your strength 
and thus decrease the chance for injury. So save yourself for the performance and protect while practicing. And now a word about what I call the performance effect. During a performance, you are pumped on adrenaline, which gives you more strength and engorges the muscles with blood, giving you more natural padding. What may have seemed very difficult in class may flow more easily during a show. Often, one may not feel strain or pain until after the show is over and the rush wears off. So make sure to take time to cool off and check for unknown bumps and scrapes, as well as possible costume damage. If during a show or practice you experience any sharp or deep pain, stop moving immediately. Change position slowly, check yourself out, and if need be, leave the stage to avoid further injury. Remember, protect while practicing, and perform from strength. Okay, we are going to do some warm-ups that are specific to prepare your body to do floor work. You will probably want to do your own warm-ups in addition to these exercises, but these movements will actually prepare your body to do the movements in the floor work section of the dance. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to completely demonstrate the movement and then break it down so you can understand where we're headed. The first movement is called a knee touch and up. Let me show you what we're going to do. Firstly, we're going to go straight down, touch the knees, rock back, and straight up. Again, with an easy shoulder, easy knees, straight down, touch the knees, rock back and up. Let me show you from the side. Again, same thing. Easy, relaxed, straight down, touch, rock back and up. One more time. Down, touch, back and up. Okay, let me tell you what we just did. Without using our hands, this exercise is to build strength, balance, and flexibility. You'll need to be able to bend your knees fully. If you cannot, try stacking pillows in front of you under your knees and gradually take them away as you can bend your knees deeper. Here we go. Feet a little bit apart. Relax your shoulders, straight arms, no hands, straight down. And at this point, you may feel a little like you're losing it. Think about your shoulders leaning back Hang on with your abdomen, touch your knees, back and straight up. One more time. Straight down, touch, back and up. Now from the side. Line up, make sure your shoulders, hips and knees are in a straight line. Here we go. Straight down and here's where you might lose it. Think about your shoulders leaning back, hang on, touch, back, and up. One more time. Down, touch, back, and up. Very good. Alrighty, the next exercise we're going to do is on the floor and the purpose is to strengthen your thighs, both front and back, your abdominals, and your butt or your gluteus muscles. And I'm lucky enough to be on a nice comfortable floor but make sure you're on a surface where your knees are comfortable and protected. The movement we're going to do is called a hinge back. Let me show you what we're going to do and then we'll talk it through. Arms out, holding on with your butt and your gut. Lean back and up and again and continue. As your strength increases, your depth will go lower and lower. And again, if you feel uncomfortable, you might want to stack pillows behind you and take them away as you can go deeper. You're using the strength in your thighs and in your back and abdominals to hold you for this. You'll build up strength. If you can do quite a few of these every day, you'll definitely build strength. The next part of this exercise 
uses your arms in a different way. It's part of the hinge back. I'm gonna have one hand up and one hand back. I'm using the side of my hand to touch and bounce up. Here we go. And again. I'm using my hand to hold a little bit of the weight, but I'm still using the strength in my thighs. And now change off. I'm going to switch from one to the other and look at my upper hand. Okay. The next exercise we're going to do, I call an arm squeeze. It's to strengthen your abdominals, your back, and your legs, and it's to prepare you to sit up comfortably when you've been laying back on the floor. I'm going to demonstrate the full movement and again break it down after we've done it. So here we go. Alrighty, what I'm doing is laying back with the side of my hand helping me to bear my weight as I go down. And when I come up, I'm literally squeezing in with my elbows to assist my body in lifting up. So we're going to do that again using the side of your hands, especially if you're going to be wearing finger symbols. You're aware that that could slide out on the floor. Side of your hand, either side of your body, lower slowly using your abdominals and back up. One more time. Now we're going to add another variation to this. You're going to fold back one knee at a time and do the same movement. Close to the body, foot flat to the floor, and open a little bit so you're at an angle. And this will stretch your quads and increase, I hope, your flexion when you're able to sit on the floor. Open your legs a little bit, hands out. Good, one more time. Now I'm gonna bend both knees back. This is a little more advanced. You could do one and then the other and eventually work up to both. Let me show you the other leg as well. I'm fully flexed, sitting between my knees, and I'm using the sides of my hands, feet close to my legs. Here we go. One more time. Good. This will probably never feel very comfortable, but this will prepare you to do the full range of floor work. Now we're going to do a preparation for a back bend on the floor. This would be a more advanced move and might be an option if you decide you want to do a complete back bend on the floor. A lot of folks are a little intimidated by going over head first into the floor. Let me show you the preparation and then I'll break it down for you. I am kneeling on the floor with my knees apart, legs straight back. I'm going to reach back toward my ankles and again, if I was feeling a little intimidated by the whole process, I might have a stack of pillows behind me where I would be aiming my head. Let me show you the complete move and then we'll break it down. Okay, what I wanted to do in that movement was to lift from my chest, dive over head first, but lift from the upper part of the body, trying not to put pressure on the lower back. So you're protecting yourself by hanging onto your ankles, or if you're not ready to go deeply yet, put your hands behind your thighs, right under your buttocks, and just go back as far as you can comfortably. Okay, I'm gonna do the full move again, slowly. Hands on the ankles, lifting from the chest, Think of diving over backwards if you're comfortable with the idea.
Okay. This section is descents to the floor or how to get down safely and comfortably to begin doing your floor work. I will demonstrate each move completely and then break it down so we can understand each part. Each move will be done safely on a carpeted floor. Remember protection, especially when you're doing descents. Most of these moves start with a twirl, pause, and drop. The first move that I'm going to do is called a knee drop. Here we go. Use your arms and hands to distract the viewer from what the mechanics of the movement actually are. Let me show you from the side. Same thing again, stepping forward using the hands to distract the viewer. Again, from the front, a simple step forward, looking up at your audience. If you look down, they're going to know you're a little worried. Try to keep your head up and a pleasant, comfortable expression. And from the side. Take your time. This descent is one of the easiest moves. This descent I call the curtsy. If you could imagine, perhaps you might be visiting the queen and you would curtsy to the queen in a beautiful, graceful manner. You might have beautiful, full skirts and a curtsy to the queen would be going down halfway, smiling at the queen and coming back up. In our belly dance descent, we're going to go all the way down to the ground, carefully, gracefully, and beautifully, and with safety. To do this move, let me demonstrate it completely, and then we'll break it down. To go all the way down again, I'm going to use my arms and hands to distract a little bit more, and descend completely down, and fold to the side. And now, what did I do? I am putting one foot behind the other diagonally and I'm aiming my back knee to the ground. The weight is mostly on the front leg. Strong thighs are needed for this. When I place the foot behind, I'm going to put the top of the foot on the ground. Slide it out as I descend, touch with the knee, rocking back onto my butt and fold to the side. I'm going to reverse the process to get up. Again, I'm going to do the same maneuver. And let me show you from the side. You would do this maneuver facing the audience, but I want you to see what my feet and arms and back are doing. One more time. Now let me do the twirl, pause, and descent with the curtsy. This descent is definitely more difficult. It incorporates the curtsy as well as a modern dance move called a side layout. I refer to it as a side layout. It is a little harder because it moves more quickly, a little more difficult in the descent more rapidly. I will break down the move very slowly and carefully and then demonstrate it for you at full speed. The slow move, including the curtsy, goes something like this. Now, a little more speed and I'll break it down step by step. The first move involves a small hop and you end your position in the first segment of the curtsy. Remember the curtsy? One foot forward, one foot back with the top of the foot touching the floor. 
you're going to very quickly go down. You want to reach for the ground with your supporting hand, leave the other hand free. You need some upper body strength for this and you want to have your arms straight down from your shoulder when you touch. So the first section of the move goes something like this. And we would continue. Let me break that down just so you know where we're headed. That little hop would have finished after a twirl, but I'm going to only show you that first section so we're very clear on what happens. Here comes the descent and the arm prop. Now, the next move comes very quickly, turning to the side and lifting. You want to have a straight arm down from the shoulder to support yourself. If you're out or forward, you're going to lose the strength in that shoulder. This leg is straight. This arm can go straight up to distract the audience again. Let's do it at full speed. I would have twirled, pause, and extend. Let me do it from the side so you can see again the mechanics. I would twirl, pause, and here I go. Now I'm going to add the twirl. the Turkish drop. One of the most beautiful, but also one of the most dangerous moves in belly dancing. A true Turkish drop literally has the dancer in the air and her knees and her shoulders hit the ground first. As you might imagine, if done incorrectly, you could cause a lot of damage. What I would like to present to you is a modified Turkish drop that's a little safer but still requires the ability to fully sit between your folded knees, just as we did in the beginning warm-up exercises, with your feet flat to the floor and close to your body. We'll go through the move very slowly, and I'll show it to you both from the back and the side where you would end the move. When this move finishes, you do not want your crotch facing the audience. You would either be parallel to your audience or with your head to the audience. First, let me show you an ending with the head to the audience. And I will do a slow turn and the drop. Now we'll do it again and I will end with my head to the side and my body parallel. Notice the similarity to the exercise we did as a warm-up that we called a hinge back, where your hand touches and you went back slowly. This will involve sliding all the way down to finish the modified Turkish drop. Now let's break it down. As you start the drop, your feet are apart, you're reaching back, with the side of your hand, and the other hand is up. Again, a little distraction for the viewer. As you go down, you're going to contract your abdomen and hang on with your butt. You don't want to be loose and cause an injury even before you hit the ground. You're aiming to support your body with your hand and hit the ground without a clunk. I'm going to do it slowly, which will be a little awkward, but let me break it down as we go. The descent continues. You're going to touch your knees and your hand and watch my feet. They're rolling forward. Top of my feet are flat and fully back. Again. One more time.
I'm going to slowly show you the modified Turkish drop ending with my head toward the audience. I'm going to very slowly break it down in stages. I'm going to start with a slow turn and pause at each stage so you can see where I'm headed. Pause, and as I go down, I'm reaching with my hand, touch with my knees, hand, my feet folded forward, and I lay back. And again, slow turn, breaking it down at each stage. One, two, three. One more time, a little faster. Now that you've gotten down to the floor, one of the easiest movements to start with are those that you do from a seated position. And that strength that you've been developing in your thighs will help you in this area. You have a choice of being at a slightly higher level by leaning back on your propped feet, toes forward, resting on your heels, or fully flat, tops of feet down on the floor, knees a little apart. This is a position you want to strive for. Right now, if you're not strong enough, a little higher for the thighs is better. Now, from the front, this is what the audience will see. I'm going to use my arms and hands first. Think air sculpture. What can you do with your arms and hands, with the space in front of you, to the side of you, or even behind you to engage and move slowly with the music and let the audience watch what you're watching. Change level. Use your upper torso as you use your arms. Look at what you're doing. Next, you might like to engage your torso with the movements you might do in a standing toxine. A rib cage circle, figure eights, as well as hip circles and hip figure eights. You need to lift off your heels a little bit, and again, that thigh strength is going to help you. Lift your arms out of the way, pose, use your ribs, circles, Figure eights. Rib circles, hip circles. Hip figure eights. Let's take a closer look at some of the torso moves. Rib cage circles. Horizontal to the floor. Complete rib cage circles. Rib figure eights, as if you were drawing them on the wall. And now, hip circles. Lift your butt off your heels. Use the strength in your thighs. Full, complete circles. Hip figure eights. Lift up and over, up and over. You may also do reverse figure eights, outward. Torso moves from the side. Rib cage circles. Rib figure eights. Hip circles. A little lower a little higher. Rib and hip figure eights.
and turning to the front, changing level with a big circle. Up in the front, down in the back. Up and down. Arms, torso, all at once. Take your time. Your audience will enjoy it. A camel done on the floor is very similar to one done while you're standing. You engage in a body undulation and using your upper body as well as your lower. I describe a camel as using the rib cage as well as the hips. Essentially a body wave flowing down the body. When you're using it in floor work, you want to engage the arms as well to emphasize the movement that you're doing. You might start from a low position, sweep up with the arms, reaching forward with the chest, and undulate. Lean back. You need strength in your thighs to do this move. Down, lean forward, sweep into it, undulate back. If your thighs are not strong enough to lean back as you're doing the motion, simply do a camel from a kneeling position. Comfortably undulate and reach. Remember where your arms are so they don't disguise the motion of your body. From the front, you may also do a camel. But it's prettier from the side. And now, how about another look at the camels, a little slower and a little more breakdown. When you engage the body in the full camel body wave, take your time. Roll down the body. Your knees are apart, allowing the hips and the ribs full play of motion. If you want to go to a lower level and engage the arms, lean forward with the chest. Bring your arms forward in a full undulation. And as you lean back, smaller undulations a little faster. And lower. And again, forward and lift. Arms sweep forward. Lean back, using your thighs, undulate, undulate and rest. The back bend on the floor is one of the more advanced moves. You'll need a lot of strength in your thighs, no fear of going over backwards, and definite relaxation between each move. Try it and practice it a lot before performing it. Let me demonstrate it fully and then we'll talk it through and break it down. Here we go. Lots of action in the thighs on that one. When you get all the way down, it's like a reverse curl to come back up. You want to take your time with that. If you don't want to come up immediately, you have a second choice. Let me show you. Just to go straight back and lay there for a moment. A further note about posture in the approach to the back bend on the floor. To begin the back bend, you need to literally start from the top, using your head first 
and then your upper body, your upper back, rather than your lower back. If you can't do this, again, go back to our beginning exercises and do the back bend preparation before attempting the complete movement in the performance. To begin the back bend, you're using the top of your head first, your upper back, literally between your shoulder blades to create that arch, and then increase the arch, supporting yourself with your thighs. Gotta have that strength. And as you lean back, relax your neck, allow your arms to go overhead. And relax. Again, one more time. Using your head first, lean back, arch the upper body, increase the arch going into the lower back, use your thighs, and go back. And relax. We're now continuing with the back layout moves, assuming that you have now fully descended to the floor and are ready to continue with a little more difficult movements. Remember, this requires that you be able to sit fully between your knees, your feet folded back, and close to your legs. You will be doing rib cage circles and rib figure eights laid out on the floor. You have a choice of doing them sideways to the audience or with your head toward the audience. Let me show you from the side first. Your arms can be to the side or over your head as you engage the ribs in a circle. Or figure eight. Remember to breathe. Take your time. I'll turn now with my head toward the audience and show you the same movements. Remember your descent, careful. Arms to the side or over the head. Or figure eights. In the back layout, we did engage the upper body. Now I'd like to show you how to use the hips, just in one move, in the back layout. The move I call a hip tick-tock, or you might visualize it as a twist. It's hips moving very flat, right, left, in the back layout. And again, I will show it to you from the side or profile to the audience, and then turn and show it to you with my head toward the audience. Arms to the side or overhead, arch up. This will never be comfortable. And the tick-tock is a twist engaging the thighs, the upper hip muscles, and the buttocks. And smaller. Now with my head toward the audience. Arch up and twist. Smaller. bigger. And now for another angle on the back layout moves. Rib cage circles. Rib cage figure eights. and a little hip work. And rest. 
We have just finished most of our movements in the back layout position. We need to move on to the next section and transition out of that position. The position itself is a little uncomfortable, but I hope we can transition out of it comfortably. I'll show you a side layout move and another move with my head to the audience to get out of the position. It will involve a twist, a lift, and a shift. Let me show you from the side first. Arms to the side or overhead, twist, lift, and shift. And again. Twist, lift, shift. Now with my head toward the audience. Twist, lift, shift. One more time. Remember to use your arms. Distract from your movement. We are now transitioning into the side layout moves. This does require a little more upper body strength. As we discussed in one of the descents earlier, you want to be straight down from your shoulder. The supporting arm needs to be aligned with the shoulder, not ahead and not behind in all of these side props. You have choices on level in these props. If you're strong enough to go to the full extension, it would look like this, all the way up. If you need to be a little lower, you can literally rest on your elbow to the side. Or you can go all the way out and relax. Now we're going to do movements in each level and demonstrate slowly as we go through them. The full extension. rib cage circles and figure eights. Hip circles and figure eights in the reverse outside. Remember the name Maya, the reverse figure eight. Notice that my weight is on my thigh, my foot is pointed, and in the reverse eight, I do have to bend my upper leg. You can also do a regular figure eight, but it is not quite as fully extended as the reverse. Another addition in this position is a leg vibration. You are going to point that toe and literally vibrate that leg causing the whole upper body to go along with the vibration. In the side prop extension, very important to point the toe. Do not let it relax. In the vibration, hold it and point it and vibrate from your thigh. Use the thigh and the knee to create that vibration. Toe close to the floor, not up in the air, close to the floor and undulate. The toe can draw a circle on the floor, helping you maintain contact. Now, at a lower level on your elbow, same thing, rib cage circles or figure eights. You may also do a figure eight that would be parallel to the floor, forward and back in this position. And now, how about all the way down? 
you could camel. And don't forget that leg vibration. There are also extensions and contractions that can be done at each level. The full extension. Contract the knee and the elbow. Reach up and around. Again. Vibrate and the lower level. Contract. Extend. Contract. Reach. Vibrate. A little more difficult move related to the side prop is a double arm prop. This definitely requires upper body strength and the ability to maintain a straight body line while you are undulating, doing some hip circles, and vibrating. Let me show you. Prop. Stiff legs. Very straight line from your shoulders all the way to your toes. Point those toes. Undulate. Or a circle. Or a vibration. You can vibrate with your bottom leg or your top. To transition out, roll toward the audience and gently change. Here's another view of the side prop movements, the camel, and the reverse figure eight, or the Maya. And now the double arm prop, same movements, new angle, camels, circles, vibration, and relax. Now we're going to do some crawls and traveling. And depending on the type of floor surface that you're dealing with, you may want to do a little more or a little less of this type of traveling. You want to be aware of whether you have a smooth surface, a rough surface, clean or dirty. Let me show you one of the first moves. It's fairly easy. You will sit on your heels and you're literally opening and closing your knees and shifting weight to change position on the floor, like so. Lifting your heels and lifting your buttocks to move in the direction you want to go. Lift, shift, and move. Use your arms and hands again. Distract with your arms and hands from the motion that's going on below your waist. Another move that is possible, I call a hip rollover. In this move, you're going to literally roll on your hips, extend your legs, roll over, and tuck again.
A rug is a wonderful surface to do this type of movement on. And again, the first move, open and close. And the second movement, hip roll over. This particular traveling movement is called the Berber Knee Walk. It does require full flexion of the knee. If you cannot bend your knee completely in a flexed position, do not do this maneuver. I will demonstrate it to you slowly from the front and then from the side and break down all the steps. I'm going to come toward you now and again I'm going to use my arms and hands to distract from some of the mechanics. Here comes my knee toward you. Touch. And touch. Let's take another look at the Berber knee walk. We'll do it a little more slowly and try to take our time rolling forward. You will lift up, take that step, roll forward, onto the knee. Control that roll. Don't let yourself go too quickly. Touch. Bring the other leg forward. Weight is a little further back. Control that roll. Touch and reach. Forward slowly. Touch and reach. Slow roll over. Touch. And now for a very advanced crawling movement in floor work. We literally call this the combat crawl. You're advancing on the floor, on your stomach, almost as if it really was the military maneuver where you're advancing forward under fire on your stomach. You would do this in a comfortable setting with a good clean rug and a comfortable audience. I'm going to describe it and then I'll demonstrate it for you. You are literally advancing on the floor using your forearm as a lever to pull you forward while you use your opposite knee to manipulate the back part of your body and push forward. You're alternating one arm and the other leg while rolling your hips to make that knee move forward. I'm going to advance toward you and pretend that you're my intended audience focus. Here we go into the combat crawl. Opposite arm, opposite leg, reach, roll, forward, roll that hip. Look at someone, make them know you're coming toward them. And now for another angle on the combat crawl. I'm going to show it to you from a diagonal as if I was focused on another member of the audience. Here we go, headed out toward that audience member. Forward with the arm leading, opposite leg. Roll the hip, reach, reach, roll the hip. Look at that person, hopefully smiling and friendly. Reach, roll, and pose, and have a good time. This next move is truly a crawl. We call it the inchworm. And you would be moving a few inches to a foot or two on the floor, on your back, undulating forward. Definitely consider what you're wearing when you do this movement. You want to have trousers. You want to consider if you're wearing anything breakable on your hips. You'll be doing this movement fully in contact with the floor. Be aware what your surface is and what your costume will be. Practice at home before you do this one in public. We start fully extended, arms overhead. I'll do the movement and then we'll talk about it. Here we go. Inhale. 
in. Notice the effect. It's literally like a little inchworm crawling along the floor. What I'm doing is as if I was performing a camel on the ground. Lifting my ribs, lifting my hips, lifting my heels, and pulling and rolling down my body. Reach with the heels, lift, pull and roll. Lift, pull and roll, lift, pull and roll. And rest. Here's a closer look at the inchworm. Starting from the feet, I'm pulling with my heels and rolling up my body, undulating on the floor, pull, arch, roll down. Pull with the heel, pull down, roll up. Pull, roll down. Pull, roll down, and keep going. Remember that this costume needs to be unfragile to survive the floor. And what about adding veil work to the movements you do in floor work? The veil you want to use is soft and light. When you hold it, as you probably know, but just a quick review. Between your first finger and your thumb, avoiding your zills. If you have finger symbols on, you need to hold it flesh to flesh. You want to have slack in the middle and a drape off each end so you can twirl it easily. I'm going to show you several descents using the veil. The veil can hide some of the mechanics and make a simple move look a lot more artistic and pretty to the audience. The first move I'm going to do is the simple step forward descent, adding the veil to it. Starting with a simple turn, one hand up, one hand out, slow turn. To the front, step forward, sweep down. Let's do that again from the side. I will step to the side as if my audience was facing in that direction. Here we go with a slow turn. Forward, float, and down. Let's try it with the curtsy descent. Again, a simple move where the veil might add some interest and confuse the audience as to what your feet are really doing. Let's try it. Same turn, hand up, hand out, slow turn. Front, curtsy, sweep back. Let's add one more turn. I'll show you this one again from the side, again, as if my audience was facing in that direction. Front, sweep forward, drop down. Now let's try it with a modified Turkish drop. This again, the descent, needs to be done from strength and balance. Make sure you're ready for this descent before you add a veil to it. I'm going to show it to you from the side, but for example, if you had a situation where you had an audience all the way around you, 360 degrees, and you still wanted to do a Turkish drop and not exactly land with your crotch toward anyone, the veil would hide anything that you didn't want to show. Let me show you a modified Turkish drop with the veil. Front, descend, lay back. Here's another way to use the veil in your floor work. If you have just finished a descent 
and use the veil in your descent. It's with you and it's spread out on the floor. You can leave it there for a little while. Let the audience wonder what's going to happen next. Remember some of our other moves with arms, hands, the body. And when you're ready, go for the veil. Reach down and if you can, grab it without looking. Spread your hands out. Work your fingers out till you're happy with the hold. Lift up. You need to be aware that using the veil on the floor is very similar to doing it standing, but there's less room to lift, so you need to be very aware to get it off the ground. Be very open, be very strong, keep your arms straight, and the veil will move easily. You can twirl, sweep, pose, Take your time with it. Play with it. Let the audience see a lot of different maneuvers. If you don't have a lot of time in your routine, maybe you might want to combine veil work and floor work in one slow section. There's a lot of variety that can be different and surprising when you add the veil to that section. Strength and open hands and have fun. One more idea for veil work on the floor. Covering and uncovering the body when you're undulating or moving underneath it. When you do a movement and add the mystery of a veil on top of it, it creates a whole new aura and a feeling about what you're doing. You can proceed with the veil movements as we just showed you, using it in the descent, maybe doing some twirls, and then when you're ready, to go into a side layout, for example, perhaps you might twirl the veil, remember the hold, open with slack in the middle, and as you prepare to go into the side move, drape the veil over the side of your body, like so. Let it lay there as a drape and emphasis on what you're doing. Let it move. It's a little mystery, and it makes the move look different. Transition out. Try the back layout move. I'll show it to you from the side. Perhaps turning, float the veil up so it extends over your body as you lay back. Rib cage circle. Hip tick tock. Arms. Undulation. Transition out. Let it fall and then pick it up. That move again looks interesting with my head to the audience. Let me show you. Float, lay back. Circle. Tick tock. Arms. Transition out, let it fall. Use it to conceal and reveal. That's part of the fun of the dance. Play with it and surprise your audience. And now we want to get up from the floor. You want to gather yourself and move slowly, get your balance, and get up slowly and gracefully from the floor in your ascent. Remember some of the exercises we did as warm-ups. I'll show you several moves that relate to those exercises. The first one is the knee touch. Remember the very first thing we did. 
gathering our feet underneath us, touching the knees, rocking back and up. If you are going to perform that, I will show you from the front and from the side. Perhaps you had just finished some floor work movement and you're ready to get up. Don't rush. You're not going to use your hands to help you. You're going to use your hands to distract the audience from any movement that's going on with your feet. Get your feet under you, your heels under your rear end, and remember the exercise. Your knees are going to rock back and up. And again, slowly down. I'm going to go down in a curtsy. Remember our curtsy descent. I'll finish some movements. Gather my feet underneath rock back and up and from the side same thing gather your feet under you heels under your rear end use your arms to distract rock back and stand straight up one more time and up. This is another fairly easy ascent that reverses one of the descents that we did earlier in this program. Basically we're going to walk forward on one knee, stand up, and do a little slow turn. I'll demonstrate it several times both from the front and the side. Here we go. Using your arms again to emphasize your motion, step forward, rise up, and turn. Again. Use your arms to emphasize the motion, step forward, rise up, and turn. And now from the side, same thing. Step forward, use your arms, and turn. Again. Arms, forward, rise, turn. With the addition of a full skirt, you can use the motion of the skirt to hide the mechanics of the ascent. The skirt I'm wearing is a beautiful full skirt. If you're going to use the skirt to cover your ascent, make sure it's big enough and has enough panels and you're wearing something under the skirt. Let me show you what we plan to do. The movements are pretty much the same as the step forward we just did except that we're going to grab an edge of the skirt in one hand. So, we might have finished some floor work movements, decided that we're going to get up, reach for the skirt, use your other hand and stand, and twirl. Again, fluff the skirt, And again, reach for the edge, step up and forward, and turn. Let's see that from the side. I have the luxury of spreading my skirt out. If you were doing your floor work and your skirt was bunched underneath you, you would just make sure that your foot was free, that when you stepped forward, the leading leg was not standing on the skirt. When you stand up, the rest of the skirt will fall in. Let's try it from this direction.
I hope this knowledge expands your range of dance expression. I believe that the understanding of floor work will help you interpret our dance form. Remember, there are even more movement combinations possible than you saw in the program today. Watch other dancers for ideas. We can all learn and be inspired by a good performance. And when you decide to do floor work, do it with pride, strength, and grace. Enjoy and exercise your power. Happy dancing.
scene one C take one. Anna Heat and her train butt. Oh. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Na 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 I'm into the scenery. <laughs> <laughs>